What's up, gang? Just had a gnat fly in my mouth right as I turned the camera on. That's always a good start. Yep. Down here in Georgia, in America's Georgia anyways, I have to deal with gnats. Oddly enough, going up north, I don't have to deal with them. But I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown on the property. I am just about done. I got a mint in my mouth. I want to make sure I had fresh breath for you guys. But I probably have um, until next week. I'll have everything else planted out here that I'm going to plant this year. Um, I have some rain coming all next week. Um, so it's going to get everything good and wet. It's going to really rain in everything that I've planted over the last week. Um, I'll start off here. This is, I would assume, an indigenous pecan tree. See those little guys right there? That is what is going to turn into your pecans. So, this is actually a pretty killer tree looking at it. I, you can see I walked around here just a little bit. There's no big nasties. I want to clear out all around here and otherwise make this, that might even be some pecans back in there, um, make this more accessible and help this pecan grow and do its thing. Might even cut down this uh, tree right here. Let me see, what is that tree? It is an oak. So that's an oak tree. Ideally, I'd want to keep it. Maybe I'll just cut down this one side of it and keep the other side. But either way, whatever turns out, I'm gonna have to um, make sure I incorporate that pecan tree into the mix. Now, somebody may have planted that shit 50 years ago for all I know. It may be a bomb ass pecan tree that no one's taking care of right now. But I'm here, I'm gonna take care of it. I marked it, got it going. Um, so, this is 15 one in one, no, this is a Summit. Summit Bronze Female Muscadine. You can see it's already getting up to the uh, to the wire there at this moment this one right here is probably my saddest looking one out of the bunch one of them has died out of the six this one right here is a 15 one and one this thing you can see is already just fucking going to town i mean this thing will probably be over there by i don't know within the next fucking by the end of this month i'm 100 percent certain that this vine will shoot all the way over to here um, I need to start getting these guys to go onto this one over this way, but that doesn't hurt my feelings. This is a pretty, pretty cool variety, 15 one and one It was just created, evidently. It was uh, a super amount of fucking sugar in these uh, muscadine grapes here. But this one right here was the one self-fertile. Looked like I had um, some ants come in and make a home right on top of it. I was a little bummed that... It ended up getting wasted, but it is what it is. This is another 15 one and one He's going to town both ways at this stage. Or she is. That's a female. Um, got our oak trees and what have you. That's a, a fry, if I'm not mistaken. And then this one right here is another 15 one and one both go into town now along down here see these little orange <coughs> tags what I've got there are gobbler oaks so eventually in my lifetime this setup that I have here is gonna not work anymore for these muscadine grapes the vines are gonna pull that shit down so I planted those trees along with the posts to give me a more permanent solution this is the chestnut the colossal chestnut um, it's doing awesome, as you can see. And this right here is a black locust. This right here is a pawpaw. They're just starting to come out. You can see its leaves coming out. They're looking pretty good. This one over here, far down in the corner, was the very first tree that I planted. On this property this is my uh, Carpathian English walnut so this tree right here is the cornerstone because it's the very first one that I had planted 
all this other stuff. It's the one that got the bug going. Now I'm like, oh, must plant more. I wasn't even supposed to be down here this weekend, but Ison's had um, all of the uh, the combination fruit trees on sale that were left to you know get rid of them. So I ended up going in there and got 12, 12 of them, motherfuckers. <laughs> You know how I like the number 12? I originally only had 11 of them, and I was like, you know what? Give me one more. That way I have 12. But <clears throat> we've got... This guy right here, if I'm not mistaken, is a uh, chicka pen, which isn't doing anything yet. <whistles> Wobbles, come over here, buddy. Come. Now. Good boy. I don't want you playing in the woods. Not today. I'm not trying to go... Yeah, he pissed me off, went all the way to the other side of the property to go and see the other dogs. Evidently, there was one of the little dogs over there was in heat, and that's probably why he did that. Pissed me off, it was the first time he's ever just said, peace, I'm gonna fucking do what I want. <laughs> and he did, he just trekked all the way through the woods, he wouldn't come back when I call him. I believe this one right here was a pecan that I had planted. See it going? Yeah, go find you some shade. That's a smart dog right there. See, he's like, fuck this. I'm hanging out in the shade. It is like 92 degrees right now. That's pretty amazing. Right now, it is hot as a motherfucker. I've got all this shit on in order to protect myself. The clouds are actually out. I mean, could you imagine seeing this landscape all the time? Seeing these clouds, every time I look up there, it doesn't even look real to me, you know? It looks like some kind of fucking painting, some kind of, I don't know, it's just gorgeous. Every time I go out and I look out here, I'm just amazed of, of the, it, it's like a TV show to me. And I have an imagination still, you know? I was one of the last few kids that was born before the imagination shit was taken away from us. <laughs> Nowadays, kids grow up, and you guys aren't allowed to have any fucking imagination. Here, everything is thought for you in this little device. Fuck that, give me a stick and some rocks. I'll figure out a fucking game. Figure out some fun stuff. Everything's about imagination, you guys. So, this is another Carpathian English walnut. Same thing with over there. Kind of skip those over. That is um, all the same shit. This guy over here is supposedly a wild pecan tree. Um, <clears throat> looks very similar to pecans. They're not necessarily wild, but you know, a motherfucking bird come over from one of these pecans or a squirrel or whatever. And there you go. So we'll see how it goes. Worst case scenario, I'll use that as rootstock. And I got two um two delicious varieties of pecans what is it choctaw and uh something else i forget pawnee pawnee and choctaw so what i can do is actually take some clippings off of those and use these rootstocks so i've got two or three of these random ass pecan trees that are just growing out you know favors basically some freaking freebies and um I don't know. I'll probably give them a shot, give them a chance. Maybe I'll get, you know, a wild hair at my ass to chop it down and fucking just turn that into a rootstock, though. Who knows? I'm just leaving them be for now because I've got nothing else to put right there. So, cool. There is another English Carpathian walnut. And the same thing with that one right there is another English Carpathian walnut. If you see what I'm trying to do, this is where it all washes out down here. <clears throat> So as you can see, water rushes through here quite frequently whenever it rains like a motherfucker. So I had stayed away from all of this in here because this is all just rock and bullshit. As far as I'm concerned, I will clean out around in this edge a little bit, but I'm going to leave all that wild can grow whatever the fuck wants to grow in there in here I need to dig a trench that way that water will go down into the creek instead of flushing back this way and then over time I can start building this area up but for right now <clears throat> it serves its purpose I can 
I can turn this little spot right here of land into a lot more fucking usable trees, fruity trees and what have you. But for right now, it's kind of the wasteland. It's also keeping everything back that way clear. This used to be a beaver pond, so it's actually really opened up in there, except for maybe three or four year old trees that have grown through there. So it wouldn't be that hard to clear that back out, have all the water rush into there, bake a dam to where that's a beaver pond again. Beaver pond, a Brian Acock pond. <laughs> Beavers are actually the only animal, or the animal other than us. How am I supposed to word this? They are the one creature on this planet that is capable of changing an environment like we do. We're the only ones that are better at changing our environment than beavers. Beavers can go in there and just fucking completely change whatever is going on in that environment it's to his liking it's whatever he decides to do oh i just spotted another pecan tree let me go s let me go see if that's the case so when you get to planting all this stuff and you get to walking in the woods and you get to i've never even been to a fucking botany class i Honestly, I didn't even know what the hell botany was until one day I was looking up some trees and plants and shit and I saw this word botany. I was like, well, what's that? <laughs> Obviously, it was years ago, but I've loved trees long before I knew what the fuck I was really getting involved in. Where did it go? It's like it disappeared. It's right here in front of my face. I know it. This can't be a pecan tree then. Okay, I saw these leaves. I thought it was a pecan tree. This isn't a pecan tree, but it's a something. I don't know what it is, but this is going to turn out to be a cool tree. Waffles, stay on this side, bro. Whatever that is. It's something that the woodpecker likes, too. Come on, buddy. I don't want you going back over there. Oop. Yeah, no pea country there. Nice, I got some overcast clouds. Thank you, Cosmos, for helping me out with that. It's been so fucking hot. Now I can be out here and show you guys what's going on without getting eradicated by the heat. So you can see how much water flows through here. Washes all this stuff out now. The whole bottom of this uh, field gets washed out down here. So any water that's rushing over that field will find its way down here and into my creeks. I'm so stoked that some rain is coming. But um, let's get back on to the tour. So this is another nut tree. Um, I've got a few different ones, chinkapins, um, gobbler oaks, uh, what the hell was the other thing, and um, chestnuts, that's it. So these guys, that's a chinkapin there, I can, no, no yeah it is, that's a chinkapin. The bark is a little bit reddish color compared to all the other ones, or just like kind of a cream or green color. That one there's a gobbler oak. But what I did here, the gentleman caught the field on fire that was clearing out that field over there and ended up bringing his uh, tractor in here to make a break in order to keep from burning up all of this. The cool thing about that, look at the difference in flowers just because of it being tilled up. Now, as I walk through here, I see fucking tons of beneficial insects flying around on all these flowers. I see bees. I see pollinating insects. That would otherwise not be here over in those 
swell spots. So it's kind of neat that that one little spot in here is bringing all these beneficial insects into the area that I otherwise need them. Pretty sweet. But it was pretty easy to plant these trees in here. You can see this right here is a chestnut. He's starting to come to life. Let me pull a little bit of that fertilizer out of there. I hit this up with some 10-10-10 because of that rain coming. So I just hit that up this morning. Hopefully that'll give us a good jump start. Now I'm going to be back out here next week for uh, Memorial Day weekend. And i um, going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what happened just over that rain. Now this is all essentially my first entry, if you will, um, for my food forest out here at the Brian Acock Plantation, if you will. I'll probably come up with a better name eventually, but this is another cool, uh, cool oak tree. He's coming up doing something. I won't mark that, but I'll leave it be. It won't hurt my feelings if he goes right there. And um, got that one there. That's a chestnut or gobbler oak or something. Same thing with right here. Got another one. Whoop. Got another one. Essentially what this even did for us too is created a swell. See how it's a swell for my trees now? I'll treat this as a swell and plant some more stuff as it goes along. But for right now, I'm incorporating all that space over there. This is all kind of a border. I want to start putting a border from this line to this line, but it's not just one straight line of trees. I want it to essentially block it off. I mean, see how it curves around? So as these trees grow up, it will block out this area like I end up wanting it to and give me more shade, cast more shade on the property. Oh, this is got some willow trees over there. There's another pecan tree just across from them. Um, then down in here, I've got some other goodies. I believe this is chamomile. Just grown wild. This is dill. Dill weed. Dill hole. Dill weed. Yeah, that shit's everywhere. See, all this stuff is dill, dill, dill. Mmm. It smells fucking awesome. I put a bunch of ant killer, but evidently not enough. There's still some around. I'm gonna do my due diligence to fuck them motherfuckers up though, because I am not a fan of fire ants. As far as I'm concerned, fire ants can go straight to hell. All right, so I guess this was when I came in here and had some fun the other day on the Subaru. <laughs> I dug it up a little bit. I was trying to till the yard and uh, enjoy myself at the same time. So let me walk back over here to the road. That way I'm not knee high and shit and dillweed and what have you. All right. So rather than the water rushing down in this road, I already got a pretty decent road established here but it was brought to my attention that when this rains the water is going to flow right down here so this is going to pool up and puddle up so what i'm doing here is since i'm capable of driving a vehicle that can go through this swampy shit i'm doing so and then creating a uh a way to keep my road from washing out in the future so this is the main road but this is going to be the road that i take whenever it's not swampy as motherfucker that way it stays swampy over there and not on this one just trying to think ahead now starting on this i started to plant these combination trees that i was talking about isons does these combination trees so this is a prune tree, a prune tree, a plum tree, which actually does have Stanley Prune. Um, what else does it have? Beauty Plum and Santa Rosa Plum. And there are 
This one here I have reason to believe is different stock because it's supposed to come in with four. Now that's one, that's one here, that's one there, and then this little guy over here is one, but these two, I don't know, maybe this one is part of this one, but this one is definitely different. So I think that one just lost its tag was all. But right across the way, we've got another one. Then on this one, and once again a plum tree, Santa Rosa plum, beauty plum, and Stanley prune. So just like that one. Now I only do see three on here. So that one I may very well have gotten robbed my, my fourth variety. Because it's supposed to have four varieties on all these, but for half off I'm not I'm not fucking too upset at all. So this one had the fourth variety, the Burbank Plum, which had a little owie on it, so I had to help him out. But as you can see, he's gonna be okay. I just need to uh, baby it a little bit. And as you can see, this is a gorgeous looking tree. It's taller than me. Oh, let me stand by this thing. Bam. So that's way the fuck out there. Now, I also have yet to plant these are the pecans that I spoke about. I got these also from Ison's Nursery. Um, had to pay full price for these. I've been trying to get them on sale. Now, this is all root. So you've got a good, I don't know, foot and a half, maybe even two foot. I'll bring it up to be in the ground. But as you can see, that's already way the fuck out there. That's my Pawnee. Now, one thing that I can do is see little branches like these that more or less sucker branches that I'm not going to really incorporate. I don't want to really fuck with anything up there like that. But for stuff like this, I may want to trim those out and use those as grafts to the other pecan trees that I have around here. Um, that's probably what's going to end up happening. Some of these branches, I'll let them get a little bit bigger and come fall, winter time, cut them off. Cut a piece of the uh, top of these um, pecans that are growing wild out here and then graft it and have a rootstock that grew wild here. I mean, what's better than something that just fucking grew out of the ground for free, right? Um, this is a china berry tree. Those are kind of neat trees. I've got a big ass one over here that I'm going to keep um, incorporate into the food forest. But stuff like this, it probably will just get chopped and dropped. Um, now, I do have <clears throat> this one right here, which was the Choctaw. The Choctaw, once again, it's way the fuck up here. You know, which will come down a little bit. It'll be more about a, a seven, eight foot tree once it's planted. And I'm going to plant those in a little while. Maybe now that it's overcast, I can get out here and do it. I figured it was too hot to really plant anything. Because one, it's too hot for me to do manual labor in fucking 95 degree weather. I'm sorry, but fuck that shit. This is stuff that I can wait until like fucking five or six o'clock when it's not 90 something degrees and have the sun <laughs> beat down on me you know i'm working smarter not harder y'all now let's come back over here check out the pear tree so once again those were the plums that we just checked out then we got the comets pear and yeho pear bartlett and the seckle pear so i do have four different varieties and the cool thing is this rootstock isn't either of those so technically there's five so if there's something that starts growing off of this rootstock so say this tree right here on up isn't the, the same as this down so if something grows off of here i'm just gonna let it be because i mean hell it's a pear a pear is a pear is a pear right 
Now, different varieties are better than others, and that's why I got these kind of trees opposed to just a random ass fucking like kefir pear. But see, this is another one of those uh, pecan trees that I was telling you about that are just coming up randomly out of the ground. Um, let's see. Okay, this is the other one. I think I have three of these pears. So that's a seckle pear, commas pear, Bartlett. And Yahoo again. So this is the same, same exact varieties that I have on this one over here. Now this one over here, if I'm not mistaken, I do have a different one, like the red Bartlett pear. What's the different one? Red Bartlett pear. So this right here, this one stem is different than everything else that I have out here, which is kind of neat. So I'll have technically um five six six varieties of pears on from three trees let's see yeah five six yeah six varieties of pears on three trees so this one had the seckle the bartlett and the and yeah it's pretty swell if you ask me Let's go run down here. These over in here are the uh, blueberry bushes. That's a pecan. This is, I don't know, it looks like a black locust if I'm not mistaken. Now over here I also have, oop, I just stepped into fire ants. No, that's one I already killed, good. This one right here is a pecan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's a pecan. But the cool thing is, here is another pecan. So see this guy here? This is a pretty good sized tree at this point. I'm gonna see if I can't um, transplant that, or like I said, just turn that into a rootstock. This one right here, I am confident that I can transplant. This one I tried my hand at grafting, but it's way too hot to graft anything right now. So I was just dicking around basically. But this is a tree that I am going to actually dig out and plant somewhere else. Probably over there on the property line. Um, and you've got one more. So, it marked him too. This one right here, I will clear around and keep it clear around in there a little bit because I want to keep this pine tree. I don't know, it's just random ass pine tree. There's a one pine tree over there, but the vast majority of my pine trees are in this spot. I want to keep all these pine trees if I can get away with it. Oh, it's cooling down. Some weather's coming, guys. Look, clouds. Oop. Here's some strings from my, taking other stuff apart. I better pick all those up. All right, so what is going on in here? These are pomegranates. These are all still dormant yet because we got them out of the cold storage and planted them just a couple of, uh, maybe, maybe three weeks ago at the most at this stage. Now, apparently they will stay dormant until roughly June and then come, come back to life and then they'll start acting right after that. But um, they were basically in a truck with no lights on and had refrigeration truck basically. But there are two different varieties on these bigger ones. Um, pomegranates, pomegranates. What is it? Wonderful in Granada, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. Yeah, Gr Granada, Granada. So I've got two Wonderfuls, two Granadas. These things are six foot tall. They're good size. This one right here is a Russian pomegranate. And this one wasn't in cold storage, so you can see it's already starting to flower and what have you. Um, this one is a, a Sal, Sal, Salavatsky. Salavatsky. I've got a di another Salavatsky down there on the end. And then this one is a different variety which one was that this is a, a Ninsky and then this one here was 
Now that's a Sasuke. And this one was the something different. Um, I can't even make out what that is. Either way, fucking pomegranates. Got another wild pea country over there growing. Our favor. This is one right here. This canopy tree. So what I'll probably have to do is clear all this out. Um, that's riddled with muscadine vines. No, that's an oak over there. But yeah, this is a pecan tree, so I can clear it out. That's a pretty large one. And then all of my um, pine trees, I'm going to keep them. Keep those pine trees going. So more or less, at this stage, you guys have seen everything on this end. Let me go and show you the apples. And the blueberries, since we're walking right by the blueberries, we'll take a look at the blueberries. Believe it or not, as long as this has already been going, this video, <laughs> we haven't even seen everything yet. That's why I've been down here a fucking week, man. I've been busy and knocking this shit out, kicking its ass. So, this is a uh, blueberry. This is the Vernon Blueberry. This is another Vernon. This is a Powder Blue Blueberry. This is a, a second Powder Blue. And this is the third Powder Blue. This is an Akalakini. And this is a second Akalakini. Um, in here we've got maypops that grow wild here so i'm just incorporating those into the food forest wherever they're growing wild they are going to be helped out so this guy right here this guy right here all these in here i'm going to try to keep them going and give them stuff to um, vine up on out here this was the china berry tree i was talking about see how big and sexy this thing is it just goes all the way up there bam so china berries are pretty cool they have awesome flowers they're awesome foliage too i mean i like them other people don't because they're kind of evasive but you know they're a good chop and drop tree that's what those black locusts are chop and drop trees mimosas chop and drop trees they're evasive but what they do is they give you good stuff for the soil. What you're trying to do is build your soil up. Not necessarily build your plants up, but build your soil up. You know what? Well, I'm already halfway down here. Before we go out there in the hot, go and look at the uh, jujubes and, you know, the apples and service berries and nankin bush cherries and aronia berries. We Still got all those to check out yet. Yeah, excuse me. Mm. This down here is the creek. This is where I have still yet four other trees. So I've got six more trees to plant today. Like I said, I'm going to wait until it gets a little bit cooler before I plant them. But these guys here are my um, fruit salad trees. I'll just show you here on one. You got an Independence Nectarine. You've got the Alberta Peach. On this one, you've got the rootstock is the Gold Dust um, Peach. No, that's that. And the Lavelle Peach is the rootstock. So you got the Lavelle Peach. You got the Gold Dust Peach. You got the Independence Nectarine. You've got the Alberta peach, and you also have a Santa Rosa plum. Now, Santa Rosa plums were actually on the, um, the plum trees out there. So, it's funny, I've got all these Santa Rosa plums. Whoop. Now, on that, I essentially have these very same varieties for each one of these. So there's five fruits on each one of these trees. Now, as you can see, what I've got going on here are these guys are just hanging out in the creek. There's plenty of water that comes through here. Waffles is enjoying himself. He just walked in there. Waffles, 
What's he doing? Don't come over here and shake. Yeah, he's my best friend. I love him. Yeah. But see, this guy right here, this is going to be a root stock. Come on, bro. Don't be doing all that. So this root stock is the Lavelle peach. So right now, what I'm doing is soaking all these. All these trees that are planted out there are more likely to survive being out there in that 90 degree weather because before I planted any of them, guess what? They hung out down here in this creek first. Overnight, more or less, um, sometimes even longer, a um, couple of days. When I first got here with all of those little trees, little tiny ones that are just coming to life now, I essentially left them in the creek for two or three days before I planted any of those just to try to get them to start you know putting out leaves and what have you because I'd rather them do that now in the water and as the Sun is kind of trickling through than being out there like just fucking dead in the Sun it's kind of getting them acclimated to to being out there in the open you know before you when whenever you wake up you don't want to just jump out into like bright sunlight you know, you want to kind of let your eyes adjust, if you will. Think of the plants like that, you know. Give them a little bit of time to adjust. Oh, I'm going to clean off my face because I've been hammered by the sun, by bugs. Clearing out that stuff, I had some kind of poisonous vine smack me in the face. Now, luckily, I'm not allergic to really any of that shit, but whenever it breaks the skin i do get some stuff so i got a little on my nose and on my forehead this thing came around and kind of smacked me right along here so i had these like wherever it had a little thorn that went in oh there's an anole see him right there on the tree <laughs> he's either trying to eat some stuff or he's talking to another anole He's doing his little dance and he's bright green. He's excited. He might be trying to find some ladies. Oi! Come and give me some lovin's women! <laughs> what a beautiful creature! Let me stick my thumb in his butt hole! <laughs> I'm making references to that uh, South Park episode <laughs> where they were talking about Steve Irwin. <laughs> God bless Steve Irwin. He's one of the coolest guys I remember watching. Hell, I was already growing up by the time he came out, if I'm not mistaken. But I watched the shit out of all of his shows. And I was heartbroken that he was taken out of such a, such a worthless little creature. He tangled with all of the monsters in the fucking world. And he gets taken out by a damn stingray. And tells you, man. And stingrays are no joke. Some of these animals, they're no joke. You start going and sticking your thumb up stingrays buttholes, they get pissed off. Whew. But that's that. Let's come back through here. All this was all just, this log was all the way through. This was covered with bullshit everywhere. Um, I've essentially got that broken down to this pile now and I'm probably gonna build a platform where I can step up there and then right above us right above here you know I'll have it to where I can drive the Subaru through here still go on down there to the the creek if need be I want to keep this um, oak tree branch where it is because I'll probably end up putting a swing or a something under there all that stuff is gonna go gotta clear all that out yet that's all muscadine vines I mean those are fucking hundreds of years old muscadine vines but I want to clear out those there's infinite amounts of muscadine vines all around here I was really upset that I'm like oh look at all these beautiful muscadine vines it took them fucking 100 years to do that but that's all in the way right now so I wrestled with that idea. I'm gonna clear all that out. I'm gonna leave my China berry tree, leave these big monster trees, leave that peach tree over there. And then all this is gonna be clear. That's gonna be my watering hole. And it's gonna be my campground and my backyard essentially. 
it's gonna be my fun entertaining spot um, this here is one of those combination apples now this is really cool because you actually have all the different varieties you got the yellow delicious apple which is looking awesome you can see and then you got the granny smith which is your main stock essentially then you got the Jonah Gold apple, which is this one here, which has got plenty of, he's got two beautiful branches. And then you got a Red Delicious, one little branch, which isn't a big deal because I don't really jump for joy over Red Delicious. But that is the only Red Delicious that I have, so it seems to be a little bit cooler at that stage. Yellow Transparent Apple. I honestly don't know shit about Yellow Transparent Apples, but I got one branch here. And I got one branch on this one. So we're going to find out how awesome those are. That's another yellow transparent apple. And he's already coming out looking good. This one you got the Jonah Gold. The Granny Smith. Oh, I got two red deliciouses. Okay. And then the yellow delicious. So those trees are looking pretty good. Now, out here these are the apple trees i just planted these like i said not too long ago they look like these sticks all this is new growth since i put them out here they've been kicking some ass this right here is a saskatoon um service berry they're coming to, to, uh, coming to life this over here is the nankin um, bush cherry um those guys are starting to do what they need to do these are the jujubes. I got two kinds. I got Lee and Lang. This here is a Lang. And the cool thing about these is they won't get real bushy. You know, these trees will probably get out to be about like this and then go upwards. So these branches that you see, they'll probably go maybe three, two or three feet out. So this spot right here will be for jujubes. And that's it. A cylindrical sphere up there so the bush got an apple another bush another jujube I've got that along this border same thing uh, bush cherry jujube apple random ass seedling apples will probably all these there's ten of them out here they'll be all good for um, cider which is ideal. So these two trees will produce the eating apples. These will produce the drinking apples. Um, Nankin, no, that's a uh, service berry. This is a jujube. That's a, uh, that's a service, uh, Nankin bush cherry. That's an apple. That's a uh, service berry. This is a jujube. That right there is the bush, uh, bush cherry. That's the apple. This right here is the jujube. This one, I'm glad, is coming to life because it essentially looked just like a stick. You know, there's no branches, no anything, but there are some lights coming on. So, this one was the border since he wasn't the, uh, the sexiest. Don't let him hear. <laughs> But then you got the, another apple, <laughs> swallowing bugs, another uh, service berry. Um, here we got one of the more beautiful jujubes. I mean, this thing is taller than me. It's amazing. This thing's awesome. Um, cool thing about these jujubes, for you guys that don't know, Half of these are going to essentially turn into dates. Now, I can't grow date um, date palms out here. You can in Florida. And I probably could once I live down here and I can kind of doctor them for the first few years and help them out. But I'm not here every day. So, I mean, there's, there's just times where I, I could sink all that money into those fucking date trees and then one thing happens like a fucking uh, a freak storm and it gets too cold and I lose all that fucking effort. I'm not trying to be a part of that right now. So once I move down here, then I'll deal with that. Um, until then, these right here will be great 
substitutes for dates. Um, they're they're like half sugar. When you take a bite in it, you're gonna be like, woohoo! So you got another apple. Not to mention, all these are all sugary ass fruits: pears, apples, um, jujubes. I got all these nuts. I didn't even show you the guys the almonds. I just realized I didn't even get into the almonds yet because I skipped over and went that way and skipped over all of this stuff. But same thing, apples, service berries, bush cherries. I also have Jerusalem artichokes planted at random in here and comfrey, um, comfrey tubers in each one of these jujubes. So they should start showing um, here pretty soon. I forgot to be even looking for those to be honest with you. Maybe I'll show you a comfrey and show you what that looks like. Comfrey is good for skin ailments. It's good fertilizer, um, good green uh, organic fertilizer. This right here is a service berry. That's an apple. This is a jujube. Once again, fucking amazing looking. This is a service berry. This is a pawpaw, got a pawpaw there, pawpaw there, um, pawpaw there, pawpaw there, pawpaw there. I think even a pawpaw out there. I've got pawpaws all along in here. Those are pawpaws. These are pawpaws. This is an almond. So see how it kind of looks a little bit like a peach tree? That is an almond tree. This guy right here, another bush cherry. This one starting to come to life. This is the uh, pawpaw. Pretty excited about those pawpaws, by the way. Um, this one right here, another almond. It's not looking as sexy. I've actually been um, putting lots of water on. I think the problem was, is it's too hot. That one right there was the first one that I planted and then um, planted these other ones afterwards. Now some of them, are looking a little bit better than this one but none of them are looking like they're like fucking really super stoked to be out here in this heat so I hope they get used to it so see these guys are starting to come to life but I already put some water on them this morning once again Paul Paul another uh, almond it's doing pretty awesome now at this stage, I think I showed you guys pretty much everything. Um, we didn't get into the creek over there. I've got that on one of my other videos if you guys want to check that out. But this is a sure enough walkthrough of everything that I had. Then the one pawpaw right here. See these pawpaws are all starting to come, come to town. Which I'm really glad because they do well in the shade. Not the shade, but you know, under canopies. And I wasn't exactly sure how they would do out here just getting hammered by the sun. So I'm glad they're kicking some ass. Once again, that's where we started the uh, pecan tree, Subaru, deer feeder. Let's check on waffles. Where are you at, waffles? You in the back of the truck? No, it's too hot back there, evidently. Oh, there he is. He was over there in the shade. What's happening, friend? Mm. I needed a drink after all that. So this is the property permaculture style, food forest style. This is the very first year. Um, this is going to be my first episode of the, I guess I'll name it um, permaculture property or food forest property, something of that nature. Um, I'll come up with it, but this will be the first one. And I'll actually, over the years progress, I want to do walkthroughs just like I did and then show you guys what, had grown well what has taken what is thriving and kicking ass what I'm able to do at that stage as far as take clippings and and do the root stocks like I was telling you I could even sell some of these things for you know 30 to 50 dollars a tree like a lot of other people do out there and 
when you think it's more or less free at this stage, once you get yourself established, you can just go out every morning and stuff you prune off, turn those into clippings, you know, turn those into new plants. Because that is the variety of plant that you clip off of there is what you're going to get. When you plant seeds, it's, it's not necessarily going to be what you expect it to be. So when you're... When you're planting these trees and what have you, a lot of us think, oh, let's eat this apple and plant some apple seeds, and now we're gonna have awesome apples like this one. No, it's gonna be what, if, you might have one of fucking 100 that's like that one. All the other ones are gonna be different. They're gonna, it's, it's kinda like having puppies. You know, when you have puppies, they may look like the parents, they may not. They may be completely different colors than what you were expecting. And that's the thing with plants. So if you want a particular variety, you have to take clippings of that. So each one of these little things, twigs, that you would essentially be like, oh, fuck this twig. That could be a potentially 20 to $30 fucking twig. So just start thinking that way. And once you start planting all of these different varieties, Start also thinking about rootstock, incorporating, you know, wild stuff like those pecans I was showing you. Um, these peaches over here. I don't know if I even showed you these peaches, but these are Indian peaches that are just growing wild over here. I can essentially graft almonds. I can graft plums, nectarines, apricots, peaches, um, plum cots, those plu cot things. The, uh, all of the different things that they merge together between the plums, nectarines, and peaches, and all those. There's a bunch of them out there now. But what I can do is essentially maybe have one tree that I buy and let get established and take clippings off of it. And then what I can come in here and do is put it on these guys here. So this branch here, that could be a fucking nectarine branch. This here could be an almond branch. This one here can be a peach branch. This one here could be, you know, you get the picture. It's cool when you think about with your backyard, you only have a small backyard. If you have, say, a cherry tree that's growing there, that isn't, you know, a typical real cherry that gives you cherries. It's just one of those like fucking varieties that do the flowers and then everyone's like, yay, flowers and then you don't get any cherries, right? Well, you could chop that shit down, use its rootstock, put some good cherries in there, and essentially have five, six, seven different varieties of cherry on that one tree, on that one rootstock. Just, just some ideas. Now out here is essentially where the place is gonna go. You can see it's pretty sandy. It's not really, choice in my opinion for growing anything here so why not grow a house why not grow the tiny home with the porch wrapped around it and put my solar panels i'll have it laying out this way that way i've got it facing south and then i'll have the solar panels on it and i'll probably have one big wind turbine in here well i'll have that but the vast majority of my power is going to come from that stream and i'll also show you guys that on a different youtube video on how i'm going to incorporate this dam and create free electricity so all of this is going to all be off the grid off the grid water off the grid electricity only thing that i'm going to be on the grid is internet i will have some satellite internet down in here um, other than that i believe i'm going to have everything else off the grid and have infinite amounts of food so i think think we're getting set you guys i think i'm getting pretty confident and starting to feel a little bit big for my britches we'll give it a couple of years yet once this stuff all grows in real good and after the next couple of years there'll be other little things like blackberries and raspberries and all these other like readily available plants i went after all of the shit that is large canopy is stuff that no one ever hears about you know and stuff that's on sale so that's what i did this year i got a big ass chunk essentially out of what i'm trying to do now all my smaller canopy trees i'll probably get another 10 or 12 of these um, random variety trees that i was showing you and incorporate them in the little spots around here 
where the house is going to be and then of course some more blueberries that's going to be a definite and then the blackberries raspberries logan berries um raspberries you know all these different varieties currants um, elderberries I don't have any elderberries out here yet so I'll, st I'll still have to get some of those yet um, yeah all that stuff is small and and easily to get easy to get readily available Woo! but I'm gonna sign off waffles is tired so am I peace out thanks for joining me permaculture style look it up Jeff Lawton um, look up uh, Bill Molson if you haven't heard of these guys look them up man look up the whole idea of permaculture creating a permanent food forest for you and your family to thrive and grow together peace out love you guys